And we're going to draw kind of the normal, you know, looking uh, humerus bone here. This is the upper part of your shoulder, the upper part of the humerus. The rotator cuff attaches to all these different little features of the bone. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a solid ball. Now, with your fracture, you've got a fragment that's like this. The ball is tilted way down like this. And then the shaft is up here. And you can kind of see an area right there where some, this hasn't healed and there's probably some motion and some of the pain that you're feeling is occurring from the shaft of the bone, kind of, we just use the term wallowing out this mm -hmm. bone. And if we wait too long to do it, then it wallows out, you know, an awful lot of that bone and makes the surgery more difficult. So up until about 20 years ago, what we would do for this fracture would be to go in and put in a metal ball that looked a lot like your humerus bone. And then we would reconstruct the bone around it that had the rotator cuff attached to it. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is that in patients, if these bones don't heal back, which occurs sometimes up to 50, 60% of the time, then patients don't really get a very good result. Mm -hmm. And then, so what we do now for this kind of fracture is what's called a reverse shoulder replacement, especially if it's been going on. I think the first time I saw you, it was already a couple of months old. So yeah. after about three weeks, you really kind of lose much ability to even do this work and have any kind of expectation of a good result. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is do what's called a reverse shoulder replacement. We're gonna put the ball where your socket is that has a peg on it and some screws that hold that in. And then we're gonna put a socket where your ball was and that'll fit down. And then we're gonna repair these bones like we did up here around the implant. So that stem of that socket will go down into your How do you like repair that. those bones down in there? We use uh, usually su heavy suture material. That's a good question. You won't see it on x-ray, but we use heavy suture material. And in this kind of fracture, a lot of times the tendons, the rotator cuff tendons are actually stronger than the bone. So we start the suturing in the tendon itself, and then we kind of wrap that all the way around so that we bring those bone fragments that are way up here and another one that's kind of way down here. We bring all those things back together with the sutures. Oh, okay. And so this is what it would look like at the very end. And so if you're, if these bones don't heal in this situation, you probably wouldn't even know it. So this, the result from this kind of surgery, we usually have the average is about 90 degrees of being able to elevate your arm after this kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. But that's, there's some people that can't elevate their arms at all, and there's some people can elevate at 160 degrees. Mm -hmm. The average after this is probably about 120 degrees, but almost everybody gets that. So it takes away this issue of these bones not healing and just gives you a better... So I'll be able to do my hair. Be able to do your hair, <laughs> make it sure that, you know, your hair gets long enough, we can do it. No, or we can do it up like yeah, that. Yeah, I so, can't put it in a ponytail. <laughs> yeah, that, well, we saw a lady today, and she had had a reverse shoulder yeah. replacement, and today was the first day she was able to put hers in a ponytail. So awesome. That, that's a realistic expectation yeah. after this kind of surgery. That's good. Okay? That's good.